Welcome to the Azores Islands Guide, a journey through Corvo. Today we embark on a scenic speedboat ride from Flores Island to Corvo Island. Enjoy a close-up look at the stunning caves and majestic waterfalls that dot the coastline. Just ahead is the enchanting village of Villa do Corvo, our destination. Get ready to lace up your hiking boots as we venture towards the legendary Caldera Volcano. On the way back we're gonna test our luck with some whale watching. And we cannot forget about the local hospitality experience. Subscribe to my channel, heat up your popcorn and let's dive right in. And then in the Azores, um, I was not prepared for the level of beauty that we encountered. There is a level of beauty that I've only experienced two, maybe three times in my life that sort of leaves you physically sick, like ill. It's so beautiful that your your body is the weak link. Like you, you might think that sugar is tasty, but if you were to eat a bag of sugar, you'd probably be sick to your stomach. And I would say this was like so much beauty that it was at an almost pathological level. And more than more than I think my family could really take in. It's a beautiful day and we are heading towards Haba to jump on a boat and have the most unforgettable experience exploring Corvo Island. To be honest, we didn't expect to be on a speedboat. <laughs> that was a big surprise for us. The crew gave us a warm welcome and we were half terrified and half excited about this experience. The boat took off smoothly. We took a deep breath heading towards the ocean. And with the stunning views around, we straight away knew it's gonna be incredible experience. The ride was absolutely amazing and so much fun. We got to explore the caves and waterfalls shooting down to the ocean. The coastline and the scenic views reminded me something out of an Avatar movie. The sea was a turquoise blue color and the sun was shining bright on us. The day couldn't be any better. With the ocean breeze, and the wind in our hair. We were crashing on the ocean waves. And I thought, this place is the ultimate paradise. We went into some of the caves under the island. Sometimes it felt a little bit scary. This is definitely something for adrenaline seekers. We were so close to the edge, with the waterfalls flying on us. It was very refreshing. Once we got satisfied with the joy going around the cliffs and edges, we started heading towards the actual Corvo Island. If you are not into adrenaline experiences, you can also go there by ferry. And the journey takes about 40 minutes. And for the fancy people, you can also take a small plane. But if I got to choose, the speedboats are definitely winning. That's it. <laughs> Welcome to the Corvo Island. As soon as we arrived, there were taxis waiting for us. But because we took our time, there was no space left. So we had a little wander around the island. 
Yeah, we just got to uh, Corvo Island from from Flores. The speedboat trip was freaking awesome. We didn't expect it was gonna be actually a, a speedboat. I was just expecting normal one, but yeah, that was fun. He took us um, on the shore, on the Flores. We've seen some wicked caves. So yeah, if you're here, if you're at, if you're at Flores, definitely take that trip to Corvo with a speedboat. Because only, only the speedboat experience is fun. And they actually take you to the island. It's, it's a one day trip, uh, 40 euro per person. So definitely worth it. This charming village is called Villa do Corvo with a population of 430 people. It is the smallest administrative unit in Portugal. Its area is 17.11 square kilometers. In the history, the Corvo and Flores Islands been discovered first time on the Spanish map in 1375. Yeah, again, we, we're on the Corvo Island, and um, I think this is like the most western island. I've read somewhere that it's pretty much closer to, uh, to America from here than to Europe, uh, from, from this side of, of the Azores. And there's 430 people living on the island. Looks like just a one small village, maybe a random house here and there. And the island actually got uh, electricity in 1963, so before that, no nothing. And I'm also wondering how they're dealing with uh, uh, with the poop. <laughs> you know, how do they flush the toilet and stuff like that? It's interesting. Ah, that's that's another thing to mention. Like everywhere in the Azores. Ah, uh, you can't put the toilet paper in the in the toilet. You have to put it in the bin provided next to it, which is really weird and uncomfortable. But yeah, that's that's what you have to do. Trying to find a shop, we found this and nothing. I would go for this. Because I'm on vacation and for these. All this stuff only cost us $28.58. It seemed to be the only shop on island. That's crazy. It's a pity because the museum there it's closed. It's closed, yeah. yeah they close on uh, Sundays and Mondays. Oh, okay. Not so, they should not. They could close in the winter time because in the winter time is nobody. Here. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. And it's hard to, for they understand what, what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Those roads are pretty narrow. Yeah, there's roads. And all this used to be for animals. Yeah, for no, horses. Not for, for horses, not, not, not for cars. Yeah, not for cars. <laughs> This area is called Baldiu. 
here are small houses called Kazori, where farmers can live for free. It's a protected area. You cannot touch the grass or the flowers. You can't even drive a car off the road. And there you have it, the reason why we all came here today. The legendary Caldero Volcano, rising from the depths of the ocean. This massive volcanic crater displays nature's raw power. Corvo is also home for the happiest cows in the whole entire world. As we reach the summit, the panoramic view takes our breath away. The vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean stretches out before us, reminding us of the island's isolated beauty. So yeah, we're sitting here uh, in the middle of Corvo Island and thinking like a lot of people come here just to see the main island, São Miguel, which is nice, the island is nice, but you really get the, the real experience of Azores when you go to the smaller islands. So I would think, you know, if you come here, reserve more time, like at, at least two weeks, two to four weeks, I would say to actually explore everything. Once you're here, you're here. Just uh, plan accordingly and hop from one island to the other. Just do all of them, because yeah, they have different vibe. And the smaller island, smaller islands are actually really, really beautiful. And you won't see the same stuff uh, on Sao Miguel. So yeah, definitely recommend it to, to check all of them. Actually, it's only our what, third island now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, the, the Flores and Corvo, you know, it, it's it's small. There, there is not much there uh, in terms of like in infrastructure. <coughs> but the nature and experience, it's 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 just something else. Yeah, I I don't think you'll get anything like that anywhere else in the world. Agree. The beauty of Corvo Island is unparalleled and we feel truly fortunate to have experienced its wonders. We really hope this episode inspires you to explore the hidden gems of the Azores Islands. We also wanted to mention that today is supposed to be 80-90% of rain. The weather worked out very well, so if you're planning your trip, do not rely on weather prediction and do your own thing, no matter what. Our hearts were full from the beautiful hike, and when we reached the top, our new friends were waiting for us. These cows were the happiest animals I have ever seen. It makes me think that if I am ever reborn, I think I wish to be reborn as a cow on this island. You need to climb up the hill to catch a reception for your phone so you can call a taxi. I promise you, you will not regret it. There are some pretty amazing views on the way down. Whoops, I think I went a little bit too close. Kill me, don't kill me! Last moments enjoying the views and catching our taxi back so we can hop on a speedboat and get to the ocean again. Uh, tour guide here, 
description description. down below. (laughs) That's what you say. As we were waiting for our boat to take off, we met a lovely Czech couple. They didn't take a taxi and wanted to hike to the crater, but they got lost in a fog and never made it there. Poor things, it was their honeymoon. On the way back, we were very lucky to see a couple of whales playing in the waves. Moments like these when you stop breathing and you're just enjoying the moment. The time's worth living for. Coffee shop. <laughs> so we close at seven. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of stuff, good stuff. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you so much. Good driving. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Enjoy your vacation. Thank you. Been Thank great. you. It was a pleasure. We accepted the invite, and we were very surprised. It was a very modern cafe with a beautiful view. Suddenly, we felt like in Europe, in a luxurious cafe. Tremendous cafe. What's the name again? Big Love. Big Love by Monica. Alright, guys, that's everything for today. I'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> In the next video, we are going to take you for a drive around the Flores Island. We woken up and the weather wasn't perfect. So we have decided we will jump in the car and see where the wind takes us. We are going to visit small villages including Ponta Delgada, check heaps of Miraduros and you will get the opportunity to get to know us a little bit. We are gonna also take a challenge and find a restaurant that is actually open at the Flores. It was very difficult. Subscribe to my channel so you do not miss out on the next episode. Comment down below if this was inspiring for you. And share with your friends if you enjoy this type of content. It was a pleasure to have you around. Some kind of crater, some kind of island in the middle of Atlantic. That's up. <laughs>